Well, today my Integra 3.4 finally arrived. After a couple of weeks of waiting, I believe it's pretty hard just to walk into a store and get one of these. You've got to place an order. So um, I won't do a complete, or a, yeah, I won't do a full unboxing. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll pull him out and, and set him up. I'll show you what it's replacing, because I'm hoping it's gonna be a, a much better improvement than what I have. It's going to be replacing a Yamaha RXV 685. So this does have Dolby, um, Dolby Atmos, but it only can do two height channels. And the Integra can do four height channels. So I'm hoping that's going to be a bit better. Also, mainly I got the Integra to try out D-Rack or Dirac Live. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes a massive improvement. So once I have it all set up, we'll have another good look at it. The speakers that I will be using uh, MagniPan 0.7s. I will be having a separate power amp to run the MagniPans, so no power issue there. My surround speakers are pretty interesting. My center speaker is a well, it's an old foldback speaker um, that bands used to use. It's a passive speaker that runs at about 99 dB efficiency, so there should be no issue with the amplifier driving those. And there's the uh, surround speakers are the same as that. I have plenty of room treatment, so D-Rack doesn't have to have, have um, too much work to do. The room's pretty good acoustic treatment anyway. Um, In-ceiling speakers, and then can speakers that hang down, which give me four overheads. So um, yeah, as I said, I'll spend a couple of um, hours hooking it all up. That can be a bit of a tedious task and then we'll get back to you and give you a full report on all how it goes so I'm sure anybody out there can feel my pain that have um, yeah, taken an old receiver and had to hook up a, a new one you now I've got to battle with all this mess and work out what goes where so we'll see you soon okay so we finally got the Integra 3.4 set up it was a uh, bit of a mission to be honest with you but I'm going to offer a few tips and tricks to make it easier for you when you, if you decide to get this model, or even the other Integra, Integra models. Um, now, my main reason for updating this over the Yamaha RXV685 was mainly for Dolby Atmos and to get the four overhead speakers going. The uh, Yamaha did Atmos, but only the two channels overhead. So that was the main reason, and also the other reason was to experience D-Rack or Direc live, however, however you want to say it. Because um, I've had some bad experiences with room correction software in the past, I never liked Orcasy that much. The Yamaha ones and the Integra owned ones, yeah, weren't they great anyway. Um, you normally found when you're watching a movie or listening to music, you always knew when you had the room correction on and it didn't sound right. And when you turned it off, your system came to life again and on how it should be. So that was a, um, yeah, the main reason to, to upgrade. So as far as uh, DRAC Live goes, um, it was a pretty simple setup. You've just got to download the Integra control app on your phone first. I didn't do that first time. I just downloaded the the uh, Direc app on, on the phone and Yeah, something Something didn't seem right. So then when, when I went back and did it again, I made sure I um, Downloaded the Integra app and then that takes through the that takes you through the uh, Direc software after that and then you get your little puck microphone. I bought a um well, I didn't actually buy it. I've, I've got a uh, stand and I put it in the positions that it shows you on the app. And once that went, that takes about probably a good 10 minutes to go through that process. Just make sure that you've got zero noise in your room, even the projector humming. The, the fan spinning was too noisy for it, so I had to turn the projector off, which I lost the screen, but I was still able to, to do it and see what was going on on the. Um, on the app or on the um, iPad. So once that went through the process, then you transfer all that data to the AVR, and then you can um, you go from there. 
So how's it sound? Well, for Dolby Atmos itself, it's breathtaking, to be honest with you. It's superb, much better than the um, Yamaha 6A5. Um, mainly because, yeah, it's got the four overheads going. Just much more depth, more detail. Um, the Dirac software really contained the subs down before it did sound a bit boomy. But um, at first, listen, you think, oh, maybe the subs aren't, aren't high enough because you're used to that big sound. But as you get used to it, now you realise that's how it should be. Because when something big does happen on screen, like a big explosion, that's when they really kick in. Um, my main thing is Dolby Atmos Music. Now, there's heaps of it around now on Apple Music. As you'll see from my previous previous videos, some it's some it's not so good, but some of it, some of it is also great, um, and that really brings that to life as well. So for any multi-channel source, um, DTS, Dolby Digital, Atmos, all that, um, it's great. Now I'll show you in the menu in a second on what you have to adjust, but to make it sound great. And so stay tuned for that. Um, what it's not so good at, unfortunately, and I don't like saying this because it is a bit uh, disappointing, two-channel music. Um, maybe I ha haven't got a setting right or something. If someone can sort of maybe put in the comments below what I need to get it better, but two-channel music on the Yamaha 605 was the best I've heard out of any, any AVR ever. And I have probably over 25 experience with different types of AVRs. And I would say it's as good as what I had it on different um, preamps and integrated amps you know, from, from companies like Rotel, Creek Audio, what else have I had? Um, yeah, some some pretty pretty decent gear. So as far as two channel goes, because the way I've got to set up is through a Raspberry P, a Pi, through a topping E30 DAC, and the analog app and the and log out into the end log input of the Integra. You just get that. It sounds there's plenty of detail there, which is fine, but it's just a bit bit brittle, bit bit harsh when you turn the volume up, even just a, the slightest, you know, just 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 that harshness there, which I found in other um, Integra AVRs as well. So, yeah, unfortunately. Um, yeah, very disappointed with, with the two channel sound. Um, I actually found it better going from the Apple TV HDMI into the Integra and the uh, lossless two channel music on Apple Music was better than the um, the room on the Raspberry Pi, which is um, unfortunate because before on the Yamaha, as I said, it was the other way around. Um, the, the room and two channel was much better on the Yamaha 685. So I might do a few more, bit more tweaking and see if I can improve that somehow. Maybe I've got to adjust the the deep, the Dirac filters a bit and see how that goes. So um, yeah. So anyway, well, I'll focus on the screen and I'll show you a few um, tips and tricks in regarding the uh, setup menu. Okay, so here's the setup screen of the Integra 3.4. This hasn't changed at all, really, from an Integra I owned probably even 10 years ago. So it'd be nice if they gave us a updated version of this. Um, the first thing I did after I went through the DRAC Live process was to go into the crossover section. And yeah, I changed all these to 80 hertz. Um, the DRAC, DRAC process, for example, that was on around 70, 70, and 60, and so forth, and so forth which, is, which is right. Because my speakers do go down to about no oh, about fifty hertz. I think I think the fronts were around sixty. But anyway, change them up all up to eighty. That just means the subs kick on a bit earlier, and also as less less strain is put on your your speakers. So we'll get out of that. And another thing I did then was go into listening mode presets. Uh, listening mode preset this is an important one because. Out of the box, by default, these are all set to all channel or seven channel stereo, which means when you first turn it on and play something, the same, the same volume, same level, everything is just outputted through all speakers at the same time, and it can, if 
you're not careful, you're gonna yeah, blast your head off. So um, what you do there is you, well, what I do in my case, because this input is the uh, Apple TV, I want everything to straight decode, which just means what is whatever is on the Apple TV will come through my AVR. So especially for now with Apple Music, there's a mixture of Dolby Atmos and Lossless 2 channel. So um, the, two, the Dolby Atmos will come through as Dolby Atmos automatically. And then the Lossless 2 channel, I've got set to stereo, so that comes in as two channel. Now the reason I've got it stereo and not direct, is because indirect, I find it sounds a bit harsher. And with direct, you can't select the direct live option. So all that work you do with those measurements, you, you, you can't do on direct. And also another big reason is you doesn't activate the subs, the sun your front two speakers. So you put that to stereo and that activates your subwoofer. And then also then you can select your direct live room correction software there. So that's an important thing to do. So I've done that on all systems there. That Streambox is a, is a video media player, so same, same, same there as well. And I've even done it on CD, because CD is my um, DAC goes into an analog input. And I've got that on stereo as well, just so the, the subwoofers are activated. So that's probably the main things you can do there. Um, of course, yeah, it's important. The first thing you do is you set up your set up your network. I've got mine on a hardwired connection. Um, you got multi-zone, miscellaneous, uh, firmware update. So, so as soon as you get it out and plug it in, make sure you do a firmware update. Because so just as you know, these are probably sitting in a box in a warehouse for a while, so they wouldn't have had the latest update on them. And yeah, that's about it. So all in all, as I said, for the purpose, for what this um, Integra's main purpose, which is home theatre duties, Dolby Atmos in particular, it's um, yeah, nine and a half out of ten easy, much better than the Yamaha AVR that I had. For unfortunately for stereo, straight stereo music, even though some um, reviewers on YouTube have said it, that it's pretty awesome, I don't agree at all. I think it's, it's almost in the pretty bad category. Um, even and even I'm using a power amp to power the front two speakers, so even in that case, it's not it's not the best. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Hope you enjoy this video, and um, we'll catch you later. Bye.